What's up, everybody? Chester Air Peaches Devotional Podcast. It's Friday, finishing up Genesis 19, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. We'll be back as Mitch finishes us and brings us in. Gives me grace for every trial. Feeds me with the living bread. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us. It's Genesis chapter 19. Yesterday we saw uh, the uh, upcoming, the lead up to the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. We saw the sexual nature of the sin, particularly the sin of homosexuality, being that which is uh, fully evil and brings destruction on Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, The reason that that's such an abomination to the Lord is because uh, God made Adam and Eve, and he made Eve uh, a perfect companion to Adam. And so God, uh, excuse me, Eve was the provision that God gave to Adam to satisfy his loneliness And so men and women are made for one another. And when there is a desire uh, to reject the provision of God, the one that God has specifically made for uh, the other uh, sex, there's a desire to take one of the uh, one of the self. Basically, it's a it's a reliance upon the self saying, no, thank you, God, I, I don't want your provision. I'll just take another one of me. And so it's kind of the height of selfishness and rebellion against the Lord. And so God, uh, and it shows up in that very intimate way. And so God seeks to address that. uh, And he says it is an abomination to his eyes. Uh, It's not worse in any other sin in the eyes of God as far as punishment. uh, But uh, it is uh, certainly an abomination to the Lord, just like any sin is an abomination to the Lord. There is hope and there is redemption by the grace and mercy of Christ through faith and repentance. So we pick this up here in verse 14 of Genesis chapter 19. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law who were going to marry his daughters. Get up, he said, and get out of this place, for the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons-in-law thought, thought he was joking. At daybreak, the angels urged Lot on, get up, take your wife, your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away in the punishment of the city. But he hesitated because of the Lord's compassion for him. The men grabbed his hand, his wife's hand, and the hands of his two daughters, and they brought him out of the out and left him outside the city. As soon as the angels got them outside, one of them said, Run for your lives. Do not look back. Do not stop anywhere on the plain. Run to the mountains, or you will be swept away. But Lot said, No, my lords, please. Your servant has indeed found favor with you, and you have shown me great kindness by saving my life. But I can can't run to the mountains. The disaster will overtake me. I will die. Look, this town is close enough for me to flee to it. It is a small place. Please let me run to it. It is only a small place, isn't it, so that I can survive? And he said to them, all right, I'll grant your request about this matter too and will not demolish the town you mentioned. Hurry up, run to it, for I cannot do anything till you get there. Therefore, the name of the city is Zoar. The sun had risen over the land when the lot, Lord Lot reached Zoar. Then out of the sky the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah, burning sulfur from the Lord. He demolished those cities and the entire plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and whatever grew out on, on the ground. But Lot's wife looked back and became a pillar of salt. Early in the morning Abraham went to the place where he had stood before the Lord. He looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah and all the land of, uh, and all the, land of the plain, and he saw that smoke was going up from the land like the smoke of a furnace. So it was when God destroyed the city of cities of the plain. He remembered Abraham and brought Lot out of the middle of upheaval when he had demolished the cities where Lot had lived. So the angels say to Lot, you got to get out of here. you got to run to the mountains or you're going to be caught up in this destruction. The destruction is going to come, burning sulfur from heaven. It's going to come and destroy these lands. Lot says, well, I can't make it to the mountains. I'll be, I'll be destroyed. He said, can I make it to, um, can I get to, uh, this city and the angel said, "Yeah, you can go to that city." And the city is Zoar, and so he goes to Zoar because we're told several times because the Lord had compassion on Lot, his wife, and his daughters. Son-in-laws didn't go. Remember, Abraham was praying for ten righteous people. We find four, and we're told that on behalf of Abraham, Lot is saved. Meaning, Abraham prayed for Lot's salvation. And uh, prayed for Lot to be saved in this situation. And God chose to answer that prayer and saved him. I, I think there's some really powerful things here. Number one, we've got to listen to the Lord. He is gracious and kind. He tells us what we've got to do. We've got to do it. To be saved from the coming destruction, we've got to follow his will. We've got to follow his instructions. What, is his, what are his instructions? Well, in this case, for Lot, it was to leave and leave the city and don't look back. The wife looks back and she turns into a pillar of salt. 
but it's to lead the city, don't look back, keep on going. We've got to learn to sacrifice, right? For the sake of the glory of God, for the sake of our salvation, we've got to sacrifice things in this life. But with the instructions for us today to escape the coming judgment of the Lord is to trust Christ. We've got to trust the Lord Jesus Christ, repent of our sins. But we've got to, first of all, we've got to trust the Lord Jesus. We've got to place our faith in him and come to faith and come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other way to escape the judgment than to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's there's the call of faith here. There's the beauty of intercessory prayer. We talked about this two days ago, but now we see it here. For the sake of Abraham, God saved Lot. Abraham is pleading with the Lord to save Lot. And the Lot does it. He, I mean, the Lord chooses to answer that prayer and save Lot. And he saves Lot. Third, we've got to be willing to recognize that God takes sin seriously. And the sin of the people rejecting his way, rejecting his will for their lives, that calls them to suffer greatly and be destroyed. And third, we note here that God will indeed judge the wicked and destroy them and save the righteous. We've already seen that here in this story. We know that this is a parable of that which will come at the end of the day when the, the sheep will be separated from the goats. The sheep will live with the Lord. The goats will be sent to hell and they will burn forever. Uh, because of their rejection of the Lord. So there's a lot to learn here, uh, but there's great hope in the gospel. There's great hope in Christ, and no sin is too great for uh, us to be, from which we can be redeemed. And so we come and trust the Lord Jesus and follow him, and he will be gracious to us. You guys take care. God bless you. See you soon. You.